circumnavigating the Earth. Combing the depths of human potential. Coming up tonight, everyday people will compete in these spectacular events. All for the chance to be crowned the People's Champions. Hello, I'm Oliver Muirhead and welcome to The People's Champions, a show where ordinary people just like you compete in extraordinary events for a chance to be crowned The People's Champion. Joining me today, as always, is our professionally trained group of judges, ready and waiting to enforce any and all rules associated with becoming an official People's Champion. So let's get this show on the road and say a big People's Champions hello to our first competitor. My name is Sean Clark, and I want to be the People's Champion for nude ice sliding. Joining Sean and his partner Paul for today's event are Megan and her sister Kelly, along with Anthony and his partner Neil. We're both from Maine, and uh, we're used to really cold ice rinks and, and cold weather in general, so the coldness factor won't even be a factor for us. One member of each team will be given a standard issue shop broom with which to propel their partner as far as possible across our official People's Champions ice rink. Furthest distance, as marked by our multi-talented and graceful judge, will become the new People's Champions. Well, it looks like Anthony and Neil are first up as they go over some last-minute strategy and Anthony heads down to the ice in his tucked position. There's the horn, and they're off. Oh, heavens, they seem to be totally out of alignment on the approach. My goodness, what a pitiful display of athleticism. And as our judge elegantly glides across the ice for the mark, one seriously has to wonder if Anthony's freakishly thick body hair played a part in this most disappointing result. Now for the measurement. And there's the measurement. Two feet, three inches. Absolutely horrendous. Now put some clothes on, Sasquatch. You're making us all sick. Next up is Megan and her partner, Kelly. And here's a quick note for those of you at home watching this with blurred nudity. It's all good. And it looks like a bit of trouble at the start. But Megan quickly takes control of the broom and launches Kelly with a burst of energy. My goodness, just look at her slide, like a naked Peggy Fleming. And as our judge quickly swoops in for the measurement, Kelly has clearly beaten the last pathetic attempt by Neil and Anthony. Nice going, Snow Fox. Now for the measurement. You can almost feel the excitement in your pants. 27 feet, one inch. 27 feet, one inch. Holy Zamboni! So it all comes down to Sean and his partner Paul, who must beat 27 feet, one inch for the title. There's the horn. And they're off to a strong and controlled start. Excellent release. But oh heavens, Sean's prematurely come out of his tuck. What an upset. As it appears that both groups of men have been put to shame by the ladies. Good luck living this one down back at the frat house. As our judge Ernie mushes across the frozen pond for a seemingly pointless measurement. 12 feet, seven inches. 12 feet, seven inches. What a loser. I just don't understand what, what really happened. I mean, I got in my good position, and I don't want to say it was the push. I don't really want to say it's not the push, but somehow we just lost steam. I just don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Get a room. And congratulations to Megan and Kelly on becoming the new people's champions for nude ice sliding. My name is Michael Thompson, and I want to be the people's champion for racing downstairs with the baby stroller. Joining Michael for today's race are Molly, Jackie, and Brandon. Holding the baby is like holding a beer. You don't drop your beer. Now for a look at the rules. Each contestant, along with baby and carriage, will attempt to race down this flight of stairs as quickly as possible. If at any time the baby should fall out of the carriage, the contestant must stop and retrieve the infant before moving on to the finish line. And it looks like our athletes are ready to go. 
Let's just say a quick prayer for a safe race. I am the proud uncle of four nieces and one nephew. Maybe I did drop one of my nieces one time, but it was a long time ago, you know. Well, Brandon, he is hoping your baby dropping days are a thing of the past. And there's the horn as Molly makes a fast break. Baby down. And yet another infant sucks concrete. So Michael takes the opportunity to sprint ahead. But he's lost his child and the lead. How devastating. There's Brandon and there's Baby as Molly makes her move. Oh, a double drop. So it's Brandon slamming his child back into the carriage and dashing towards the finish line with the rest of the field tight on his heels. And he's done it, my heavens. And in the span of just 39 seconds, Brandon has gone from habitual baby dropper to a new people's champion. Simply remarkable. From the very beginning, I set my pace. It was a little rocky. But my competition was, was struggling. They kept on dropping their babies. They couldn't keep up. It was a piece of cake. Just call me Uncle Brandon. No, thank you. But congratulations on becoming the new people's champion for baby carriage racing. My name is Craig Zavonner. I'd like to be a people's champion for nailing someone with an automatic tennis ball machine. Joining Craig for today's festivities is Laura. The rules of the game are quite simple. Each contestant will have one minute to nail our fearless judge as many times as possible with this high-powered tennis ball machine. I've played tennis in the past, I've used the machines, but I've never actually aimed one at another human. Well, it sounds like Craig is ready to whack. There's the horn, and he's off. Oh, dear, there's a direct hit to our professionally trained judge's head. Number two, hard off the chest. And there's number three. Let's see if he can keep up this torrid pace. Number four, followed by five. And six. And I'm quite certain that Ivan Lendl is rolling over in his grave right about now. Number eight, right to the head. And there's number nine. Nine hits, a very respectable showing. Let's see if Laura is up to the challenge. She needs to beat nine hits to become a new people's champion. And there's number one. Number two. Oh, dear. Number three with a direct hit to the red zone. There's four off the side of poor Ernie's head. And number five as Laura continues to hammer away at our helpless judge. That one may hurt. As well as that one. Oh, and that one. My heavens. There's number nine. She's tied, Greg. And there's number ten. Laura is our new people's champion, but she's not done yet. As our judge carries on like the true professional he is. Oh, thank goodness for the horn. And it looks like that last hit will count, which brings Laura's total to 13. A splendid showing. I felt good. I felt like I had some really good hits right in the beginning. I had a rhythm going. I, uh, I wasn't sure of the count until the end, but I, I had a pretty good feeling. I was comfortable there. Five to one. Bottom line. Congratulations to Laura McCreary on becoming the new people's champion for nailing our judge with an automatic tennis ball machine. Here's a peek at what's coming up next. She seems to be taking her own sweet time. Oh, my. I have to hear what you're saying to your girlfriend. There's the toss. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the People's Champions. Widely hailed as the true leader in televised athletic competition. I'm your host, Oliver Muirhead, and it's with great pride that I present you with our next heart-pounding event. My name is Elle Shiera, and I want to be the People's Champion for chucking a cell phone. Joining Elle for today's toss are Jason and Antoine. You know what, nothing irritates me more than people talking loud on their cell phones, just yakety yak yak, like they're talking to somebody important. I, I don't like that, they're not talking to me. Now for a look at the rules. Once our annoying guy starts talking loudly on his cell phone. So anyway, she comes up to me and says, I know. Each contestant will have one attempt to grab the phone out of his hands and then launch it as far as possible. Well, it looks like L is first up. 
Hey, buddy, what's going on, huh? And there's so the annoyance. The she looks good, and My I goodness, I she looks jolly I angry. The front a of he doesn't give me the table that I want. God damn it, will you shut the f up? Oh dear. There's the toss. And a very weak one at that. As our young judge sprints towards the phone like a fruit weasel down a trouser leg, Elle won't be too pleased with her effort. And while Ernie and his trusty measuring wheel move in for the mark, remember, it's not where the cell phone hits, but rather where it stops its slide. 55 feet, 6 inches. 55 feet, 6 inches. What a missed opportunity. Next up is Jason. And there's the phone. Hey, buddy, what's going on? How's the new car running? By heavens, huh? he seems a bit peeved at our annoying guy. Oh, really? Is that great or what? No, no, it's a really It's nice on. Shut the f up! As Jason unleashes a very strong throw, but minimal slidage. Oh, dear, he seems a bit miffed at himself. As our judge Ernie slowly pushes his tool along the ground for the all-important measurement. 121 feet, 8 inches. 121 feet, 8 inches. Jason's our leader, but for how long? Next up is Antoine. So how are you doing? Enough about me, anyway. Guess, As our you know, annoying guy starts his conversation. But, you know, anyway, I've been trying to work on it, but, you know... I think we could be in for some fireworks here. You come back forward. Hey man, shut up, man! Put some bust you in your mouth. Oh dear. And he gets off a massive heave. Holy free weekend and evening minutes, can you hear me now? I haven't seen a toss like that since Strasbourg in 59. Unbelievable! 255 feet, 9 inches. 255 feet, 9 inches. I pop it. I got it all, man. Look, you see this? Me and him, people's champion right here. You see this? I knew it. Well, good for you, Antoine. And congratulations on becoming the new people's champion for tossing a cell phone. My name is Joe Hernandez Kolsky, and I want to be the people's champion for putting on a superhero's outfit in a phone booth. Joining Joe for today's competition is Heather. Each contestant will receive a briefcase containing a superhero's outfit. When the horn sounds, they must enter the phone booth and change into the outfit as quickly as possible. The contestant exiting the booth fully dressed in the fastest time will be crowned the new people's champion. I'm a teacher, and I believe that what I'm doing is kind of like a superhero. They kind of look up to me like that, and I think that today is going to be a chance for me to prove to them that I really am. Well, it looks like Joe is ready to go. There's the horn, and he's off to the phone booth. And I think you can only imagine what must be going through the minds of Joe's students back at Benjamin Harrison Middle School right about now. As he quickly wriggles out of his shirt, straight for the pants. Let's hope he stops at the boxers. He seems to be moving along quite nicely. And now for this spandex cod piece, followed by the cape. All that remains now is the protective hood, followed by the gloves, and there's the trademark thunderbolts. Excellent pacing. And he's out of the door, but something's not right. The bolts are down. I repeat, the bolts are down. Finally, there's the horn and a very respectable time of 48 seconds. Nice going, Joe. And now for Heather. As she dashes to the phone booth with only two things in mind, get out of those clothes and get into the superhero outfit. She seems to be taking her own sweet time. Oh my, it seems that our field cam might be a bit uh, gratuitous here. An obvious oversight by our technical crew, who usually keep a close eye out for gaffes like that. As she slides out of her top, and our judge goes in for a closer look. Obviously making sure no rules have been broken here. 
If Heather has any hope of becoming a people's champion, she must speed up the pace. But wait a second. She seems to have put on her gloves before the cape. What is she thinking? A rookie mistake that should cost her valuable time. Why in heaven's name did she put on the gloves first? 48 seconds is the time to beat. As she exits the booth, and it's exactly as I'd feared. 52 seconds, not good enough. But it certainly was fun watching Heather try. It was just really intense, it was quick. The, the secret is putting the cape on before you put the gloves on. That definitely helped a lot. I think I'm a, a good role model for my students. I think they'll be happy that I won. I'm sure they will, Joe. And congratulations on becoming the people's champion for changing into a superhero's outfit the fastest. My name is Miriam Shanasi, and I want to be the people's champion for filling up a shot glass with spit. Joining Miriam for today's event are Cody and Rudy. The contestant who fills up their shot glass with saliva the fastest <laughs> will become the new people's champion. I can spit like a man, and my, my spit is very thick, and that's what I need to win this competition today, so they don't know what's coming. What a delicate young flower. And there's the horn. Just listen to those hawks, digging down deep to bring up whatever fluid possible from the very bowels of their being. And Cody seems to be using the lawn sprinkler technique, short and rhythmic, not a good strategy, I'm afraid. My goodness, just look at Rudy's volume. Strong and heavy, what talent. As Miriam goes in for, oh heavens, she seems to have caught a hanger, but that doesn't stop her quest. Nice job. As Rudy continues loogieing away with both speed and volume, you can only imagine the countless hours of self-hydrating practice these athletes have put in. Let's see what Miriam has in store for us. Just look at that release. Nice and smooth. But Cody continues his struggle. And as we approach the one minute mark, it looks like Rudy's in the lead, followed closely by Miriam, with Cody bringing up the rear. But wait, it appears that Rudy is only one loogie away from becoming a champion. He's done it. It's over. Thank goodness. I think I was doing a pretty good job spitting out big loogies and then I was just looking over to the other contestants to see where I stand. It seemed like he had more bubbles. I had some bubbles in mind, I think, but I guess uh, I didn't do as best as I thought I could. Better luck next time, Miriam. And congratulations, Rudy Escobar. You're the new people's champion <laughs> for filling up a shot glass with spit. Still to come on the people's champions, Oh, my heavens, perhaps a little more to work with. We'll be right back. And now it's time for this week's viewer's submission. How much would you like to punch this face? Or this? Or what about this? Well, apparently none of them are as punchable as this face, which we've selected as the people's champion for this week's viewer's submission. So congratulations, Brett DeLuca. You're an official people's champion. For more information on how you can become a People's Champion, go to fxnetworks.com and click on the People's Champions. My name is Nikki Bohannon. I want to be the People's Champion for the fastest bra removal. Joining Nikki for today's event are Kathy and Danielle. And now for a look at the rules. Each contestant must unhook their bra and then remove it from underneath their shirt as fast as humanly possible. I got ready for today by, first of all, trying on a few different bras, trying to figure out which bras were the easiest to get undone. And I found a specific manner that you can do it in one quick motion, and that's what I'm going to do today, and I'm going to get that thing off in no time flat. Well, it sounds like Nikki is ready to go. And so is our judge. 
There's the horn, and she's off. A speedy unclasping underneath the shirt. My word, so buxom and full of life. And there's the bra, 11 seconds flat. A prestacular showing. Next up is Danielle. And she's having a bit of trouble with that latch. Oh, my heavens, perhaps a little more to work with. But she's done it! 10.2 seconds. Danielle is our new leader, but for how long? I have a 15-year-old son. He got a stopwatch. And I practiced over and over and over, which was the best removal method. Was it out under the back? Was it through the left arm, through the right arm? You know, and he timed me. Now, that's what I call dedication. And she's off, not even bothering to go underneath the shirt. What a daring move. She's doing quite well. And there's the bra. 7.2 seconds, she's done it. Kathy's our new champion. I made a last minute decision to not go under my shirt. I decided I could successfully do it from the outside and save myself a few seconds. And I think in the end, that's what, that's what made me prevail. Congratulations, Kathy Hatfield. You're the new people's champion for the fastest bra removal. We'll be right back. Another day, another round of unparalleled athletic achievement. So from all of us here at the People's Champions, let's give a warm People's Champions welcome to our new inductees into the People's Champions Hall of People's Champions.